This tutorial is to walk you through how to write a formal laboratory port, report for either AP or Honors Chemistry. So I ask that you use a composition notebook, and the reason why I ask that you use a composition notebook for your lab notebook is because spiral-bound notebooks tend to get caught up on each other, um, and since I will be collecting these to grade them, I don't want to get frustrated. So please use a composition notebook um, for your lab notebook. All right, the way to set this up, you're going to want to number all the right-hand pages in the upper right-hand corner, um, just in order. So one, two, uh, three, etc., all the way to the end of the notebook. You're never going to tear pages out of the notebook. Um, so if you mess something up, um, you should probably be writing in pencil so that you can erase it. Um, but if you mess something up, uh, rather than um, tearing the piece of paper out and starting over, um, you can just cross it out or erase it. Um, so if you wrote in pen, you can just cross it out and then rewrite nice and cleanly and you don't have to tear pages out. Okay, pages one and two will be dedicated to your table of contents. So you'll actually title it table of contents and then you'll make a column for the page numbers and a column for what you find on those page numbers. So that's pages one and two. Page three, will be your contact list. This is the name, email, and phone number of the people in your lab group. You're going to want to make sure that you get this from the people in your lab group so that if you're at home working on your lab report and you have questions because maybe you didn't write something down or you weren't sure of something, you have someone that you can call to ask those questions. You're responsible for getting your contact list. Page four and page five is where you're going to tape in your lab safety guidelines that I give you. So you can cut them out and tape them in onto pages four and five. And page six is where you will tape in your formal lab report, report guidelines that I give you in class. So today I'm actually going to go through an example of how to do this, but you're going to want to keep this in your notebook just so that you can refer back to it later. And of course, you want to make sure you go back and you list all of these things and their page numbers in the table of contents. All right, page seven is where you're going to start your very first lab report. Now, it should be said that when you're doing the lab in class, you are not writing the lab report as you go. The lab report should be written when you are finished with the lab and you have analyzed all of your data. Then you're going to go back and you're going to write the report. Um, so what are you supposed to, where are you supposed to write all the stuff that you do during the lab? That's what you do on the left-hand pages. The left-hand pages of your lab notebook are always going to be scratch paper and your notes. So I will never grade anything on the left-hand page. I'm never even going to look at anything on the left-hand page. I'm only ever going to grade stuff on the right-hand pages. So just know that if you want me to look at something, it better be on the right-hand page because I am not even going to look over here at whatever's happening over on the left. Okay, lab reports. So the first thing you're going to want to do is give it a title. The title should be descriptive, meaning it should tell me what it is you did. So this particular lab report is titled Determination of Sodium Hydroxide Concentration by Titration. So it describes to me what the lab was all about. The second thing you're going to want to list is your purpose. Now, I should have left a space between this and the purpose, but I didn't, and that's okay. It's nice to have it not all crammed together. It's easier to read. So your purpose in this particular lab was to determine the concentration of an unknown solution of sodium hydroxide by titrating it with a one molar hydrochloric acid solution. So notice it's just a sentence, a statement, nice, clear, easy to understand. Um, materials. Your materials are a two-columned list of everything you would need to do this lab. So think of it like a recipe. It's the ingredients for your recipe. So it's not just the chemicals, but also any glassware or equipment that you might need to use. So here's your list. You want to also include in your list sizes of things. So Erlenmeyer flasks come in a lot of different sizes, so indicate what size you want um, to use in this lab. And then in this particular lab, I also sketched out um, what I like to call, or what a lot of people um, like to call, the experimental setup. Um, I sketched it out because if I were asking someone else to repeat, to do this lab, repeat what I did, I would, I would want them to know how to set it up. 
So um, again, not every lab is going to have an experimental setup, but this particular lab happens to have one. Okay. Um, procedure. Um, the procedure is a numbered stepped list of or, or instructions. It's instructions. Now, when you're writing your procedure, please do not write them in first person. Your procedure should never be I did this, we did this. It should always be written as instructions for someone else. And oftentimes, I will actually give you a procedure in the, in the paper I give you. You can just copy it right over. But if you are designing the lab yourself, you have to come up with your own procedure. I suggest that you write it out on a separate sheet of paper and make it pretty in the way you want it and then copy it over um, onto your formal lab report. So notice they're in steps and, this, and the, the statements are not, they are instructions for someone else. Okay. Um, all right. The next, so here's some more procedure. So there's all that. The next Thing that you'll want to do is your data presentation. Now your data presentation is going to be either a data table or a graph. So in this case it wasn't appropriate to do a graph so we did a data table. Now all this data, I didn't draw the data table and populate it as I was doing the lab. I, I wrote all that stuff over here on the left hand page in my notes. So I just scribbled while I was doing the lab all of my data and any observations and things like that. And then when I was ready to write my lab report, I figured out how I'd like to organize it. And then I drew a nice, pretty, very clean lined, I used a straight edge, um, data table. Your data table needs a title. And then you need to title the columns and the rows so that I know what it is I'm looking at. And then everything should have units and it should be nice and pretty and easy to read. And you should also always have averages. So in this case, we did three trials of this experiment. Um, and of course, uh, you want to have um, all three trials listed as well as the averages or the average for the three trials. Your data analysis and calculation section should be sample calculation. So if you ended up having to make uh, repeated calculations of something, I don't need to see each and every one of those calculations. I just need to see a sample. In this lab, we didn't have to do repeated calculations. I, I did basically two calculations in this lab. First, I calculated the average amount of hydrochloric acid used. So see this number required a calculation, therefore I need to show it in my data analysis section. Um, if you had to say calculate molar mass or something like that, and it was actually part of the objective for the lab, you would need to put that here. But if molar mass was something that you just needed to make other calculations and it wasn't part of the objective for the lab, you don't need to show molar mass calculations. The second calculation I needed to make in this lab was I needed to actually calculate the concentration of my sodium hydroxide from my uh, hydrochloric acid that I used. So that is where I showed the concentration of sodium hydroxide calculation right here and then I circled my final answer. Um, so there's the two calculations I made. And I also had to write out a balanced equation for the reaction. So there's the balanced equation for the reaction that took place in this lab. Your conclusion, your conclusion section should be one or two sentences long tops. So it should literally tell me what your answer to your objective was. So your objective was to find the concentration of sodium hydroxide by titrating it. And so your conclusion should tell me what your concentration of sodium hydroxide was according to your data. So please make sure that this number that you get matches the calculations that you made according to the data that you took. If it doesn't, you will not get credit for the lab. The last part of the lab is the discussion of error. All lab is going to have, or all experiments will have some level of error. And so you are actually going to be calculating the percentage of error. And then you're going to be explaining to me why you didn't get a 0% error. Because you're not going to get a 0% error. It's very rare that anyone gets it perfect. So to do this, you are to, to calculate percent error, you are going to need to know what value you should have gotten. So in this particular lab, we were trying to find the concentration of sodium hydroxide. You, you did an experiment and this is what you got. Now this is what you should have gotten. This number is going to be either provided to you by the teacher 
at the end of the lab, or it's going to be a number you'll have to look up on the internet. In this case, it was provided. So this is what you should have gotten as your concentration, but this is what you got. So you're going to take what you should have gotten, and you're going to subtract what you did get, and you're going to divide by what you should have gotten, and you're going to multiply by 100 and get a percentage error. Percent error of this lab was 17%. You were 17% off, and then you need to discuss why. Now, when you discuss the sources of error, those should never, ever be things you could have controlled, meaning it shouldn't say, well, we didn't measure correctly, or we spilled a bunch on the desktop and didn't fix it, or things like that. Because if you're doing that and you're being very sloppy and you're not correcting your behavior, um, then of course you're going to have a ton of error. And I don't want to hear about it. You should be doing it right. You should be clean. You should be careful. And you should correct that behavior before you start taking data. So the discussion of error should be limited mostly to uh, equipment malfunction. So for example, I said in this that um, the, the error was because of the burette and the stopcock on the burette being hard to turn. So it was hard to control the flow from the burette. Great. Here's your calculation of error. And then, of course, you want to write a statement that indicates whether your error was, um, you know, whatever was wrong, decreased your output or your um, calculation or your calculated answer or, de or increased it. In this case, it decreased it, right? We should have got 1.2, but we got 1.0, so we got a, de a decrease in our results. And then, of course, you want to write a one or two sentence statement explaining what you would do different next time or how you would, you know, make your results better if you could. And again, if it's, well, I should measure more carefully, then you, you should have done that in the first place. You should have fixed that behavior before you started taking data. Anyway, that's how to write a formal lab report. You'll notice this particular lab report's only three pages long. So they tend to be very short. They shouldn't be very lengthy. Hopefully, you're not writing 10-page lab reports um, unless you write really big. Okay, thanks.